How's everybody doing tonight? Amen. Did you have a good time at work? Work? What's that? <laughs> All right. Whoa. That's good. Well, all right. Well, are you ready to hear a word from the Lord tonight? Amen. Amen. Well, I think we got a good one for you tonight. It's always a tough one to deliver, but we'll give it a shot. We're going to be coming from 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1 to 2, and then we're going to look at 12 to 19. So if you would, stand with me. First Peter chapter four, verse one to two. Are you there? Almost. <laughs> it reads this way For as much then as Christ has suffered for us. In the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he hath suffered, for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men. But the will of God. Now we'll jump down to 12 to 19. It says, Beloved, this is good, pay attention here. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch. As ye are partakers of Christ's suffering. That when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. And on their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part... He is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer. Now look, look at this next one. Or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, <clears throat> let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. I'll stop there. Let's pray. Father God, we come once again, Lord, just thanking you for this privilege and this opportunity to hear from you tonight. Lord, as we sit in anticipation to hear your word, Lord, we pray <clears throat> that I decrease and you increase. And Lord, we pray that they not see me, but they see thee. And we'll be so careful to thank you. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wow. The message tonight is going to be titled, Why Do Christians Suffer? That's a good question. Who thinks that's a good question? I do. Well, there are a lot of things that we'll cover. The first one we'll talk about is Christians simply suffer because we have been born. <laughs> Isn't that right? We simply suffer because we've been born. The Bible says, um, um, the, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. And you say, hey, I haven't sinned. But wait a minute, Adam and Eve sinned. The Bible says, one sin, it passed upon what? All. So you are simply going to suffer because you've been born. No way around it. Well, if you think about it, when Jesus, uh, well, when God went down the line and talked to Adam and Eve, 
he gave him some stipulations. The man would work with the sweat of his brow. The woman would have suffering and trial bearing. Wouldn't you always wonder what would have happened if they didn't sin? Man, I always wondered that. Man, ladies would have just pushed it out with no problem. Maybe the food just would have grown up and you just pick it. You wouldn't have to till the ground. I don't know. But we simply suffer because we've been born. Romans 5.12 tells us that. And that's the scripture that we quoted. Here, here's what it says. It says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, that all have sin. Think about Job. Did Job sin? No. But yet, he suffered great things. Think about Jesus. He didn't sin, but he suffered. Look at Job chapter 14, verse 1. Job 14, 1. And this is to be clear here. I think it, the Bible is always much clearer than I am. 14, 1 says this. Man that is born of a woman is a few days. And what? Full of trouble. Isn't that true? Yep. So, we are going to suffer because we've been born. Um, Psalms 51 verse 5 is another good scripture that you can look at. Psalms 51 verse 5. It says, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and sin did my mother Conceive me. Wow. That means we're going to be born into trouble. So just because of that, we're going to suffer some things. I think a lot of Christians think, hey, I'm saved, I'm a child of God, I'm not going to get sick. Well, you're living in a world that has been cursed, you're going to get sick. You're going to have issues. So we shouldn't get bent out of shape when we're having issues. Because the Bible say, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And he told us that that sin, that soul that sinneth, it shall what? It shall surely die. I like somebody say surely. It shall surely die. You know, there are some customs in some cultures that when a child is born, they mourn. Don't you think about this. And then when someone dies, they rejoice. If you really think about it, I think they got it right. Because you think about that little baby. Oh, it's so cute. But boy, that feller and that girl's going to go through so much. Heartbreak, hurt, getting fall, fall and all that stuff. So they mourn when the person is born. And then when someone dies, they rejoice. And that's the way I think it should be. So we simply suffer because we've been born. You didn't do anything wrong. Now, the next reason we suffer. Here's number two. The chastening hand of the Lord. We suffer. When the Lord chastens us. Well, we like to say, get a whooping. Whenever the Lord whoops you, He knows how to do it. I don't know about you, but I'm telling you, it's, I'm, I'm a, um, a, a big family, it's eight of us. And I'm telling you, when my daddy whoops, man, I'm telling you, we scattered. I remember one time he, was, he got his belt with the holes in it. Boy, I knew I was in trouble. I mean, I was under the bed, and he just lifting the bed up, coming after me. So when, I'm telling you, when your daddy whoops you, he knows why he's whooping you, and it's really for your benefit. I really did do something bad. And thank God that he disciplined me. If you have a parent that doesn't discipline you, they probably don't love you. Well, don't take my word for it. Let's take a look at this. Hebrews chapter 12. 
Hebrews chapter 12, 5 through 8. Listen to this. Hebrews chapter 12, 5 through 8. Man, this is good. Are you there? It says, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and he scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? I'm telling you, he's not a son. But if ye be without chastisement, where all ye all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not son. So if the Lord, if you can sin willingly, and the Lord is not chastening you, you're not saved. I'm not, don't fool yourself. Because the Lord will get you in line. It's right here. If you can just continue to go on and sin, have no thought for what you're doing wrong, you're probably not his son. Would everybody agree there? Bill, is that right? Okay. <laughs> Bill was staring at me there. So, okay. So the chastening hand of the Lord, whenever we sin, the Lord will get us in line. Thank God for that. Um, you know, there's actually a story in the Bible where um, these kids were, I, I can't remember, I'm just going to tell you, you probably will pick it up. Well, these kids were doing something wicked, and their dad knew it and didn't stop it, and the Lord got the dad. I told my boys, you do something wrong, I'm going to be on you whiter than right. As a matter of fact, I, I'm, I'm going to be on you so fast, you're grass and I'm the lawnmower, and I'm going to get you. <laughs> So whenever you're doing something wrong, I am going to try to put you in line so that, the Lord, so that you can glorify God. That's the key. I want you to think about this. Think about this. Who do you think your kid... You know, why did God put honor your mother and father in the Ten Commandments? You don't think that was important? Think about who... Even before God, your kids are going to see the parents, Right? And I get people at work telling me, just let your kids do what they want to do, find themselves. You want me to just put my kid in the street? You think he's going to find himself? I think not. We have to train them up. God gives us that mandate. That's exactly right. They'll find trouble. We need to train them up. Now, so whenever we sin... The Lord will chasten us. And whenever we put our hand unto sin, we cause our own trouble. Look at Psalms 25 verse 3. This is a great verse here. It gives us great protection. But it also gives us a stern warning. Psalms 125 verse 3. It says, for the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Praise God. He has given us protection. The um, wicked shall not hurt us. Isn't that good? But he goes on. Lest the righteous put forth their hand unto iniquity. Then the Lord will allow the wicked one to chastise you. Wow, think about that. He's already protected us, but now we're putting our hand unto iniquity. When I read that verse, I just thought about Adam and Eve going after that fruit. When the Lord tells us not to do something, it is for our protection. It is not to hinder us or to you know, stop us from getting, you know, it's to help us. But we put our hand on iniquity. And then we will suffer the consequences. Even if we're saved, yeah, the Lord, you're still saved. But guess what? God will not be marred. Whatsoever a man soweth, what? That shall he reap. Yeah.